Welcome back everybody. Now that we've got 1113's engine upright and with a good understanding, I'm gonna start closing in some of these compartments. So today, we're starting with these four right here on the side. That means I have the lifter boxes on the bench. I just call them lifter boxes. Uh, I don't know what the official term is. I'd have to consult the manual, but they're boxes and they house the lifters. Each one has a decompressor mechanism in it. Um, it seems like it may be complicated, but like anything else on this engine, they're incredibly stout and stupid simple. So let's get into it. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're working on these valve train components is to try and keep all the pieces in the same positions that they were in when they were last assembled. That makes sure that you keep all of the same lifters on all the same cam lobes, everything stays happy. And if you remember back when I removed these from 1113's original engine, I used my number stamps to identify which compartments these came out of. This has a very faint number one on it, so I know it's the first one back from the front. You can see a faint number two here, that's second in line. I also stamped number three and number four. If you don't remember all that, you can click here right about now, go back, relive all that stuff. But in the meantime, I'm gonna clean most of these out of the way and we will do a disassembly sequence of just one of them because it's the same process for all four. So before we take this apart, we're gonna to need to identify which one of these lifters is intake and which is exhaust because they are both the same. All eight lifters in this engine are exactly the same, exact same part number, and you won't be able to tell them apart once you take them out. So to identify which is intake and which is exhaust, we can just actuate the decompression mechanism. Now, this mechanism acts upon the intake lifters only. It leaves the exhausts alone. So as we rotate this lever forward and back, you can see this lifter right here will raise and lower somewhat as I pivot that lever. That tells me that is the intake. So we are on box number two. So I'll just take a Sharpie here and we will do number two for box number two. I in for intake, so this is box two. E, X for exhaust. So there, we're gonna know which one is which after we pop those out of there. Now to disassemble, first thing I need to do is get this lever off of here. So I'll just take a couple wrenches and release the tension on the clamp bolt. I find it works easiest for me if I just uh, if I just get the bolt right out of there. That opens up the uh, slot at the base of that lever. What I do is gently spread that a little bit by tapping a large screwdriver in there. Sometimes it needs a little bit of help. There we go, we got it moving. That screwdriver spreads that uh, lever a little bit so it releases the grip on the shaft. And that can work off just like that. Next, there is a small key that's gonna have to be removed right there. It keys the lever in position on that shaft. Just take a side cutters and just carefully grip that key, roll it out. There it is. At this point, you can take these two screws out that hold this plate on there. There's one and two. That plate will then come off. That little shaft comes out. There is a cam on the end of there. I'll show you how that actuates that uh, that intake lifter in a minute. Flipping it over now, the only thing left holding the lifters in is this piece of wire. The uh, parts manual calls it a lock wire. I have not been able to source a part number for that yet, but it is just regular 1 8 diameter round rod. Even a piece of welding rod would do, so there's no need to try and find a special cat Part for that, when you can just buy a chunk of this, cut it cut it to length as needed and replace those, uh, those lock wires with that. So no big deal there. So there are two ways that a person could take that out. Um, I've been doing a little bit of playing with number one here and I just uh, straightened the one end and you can just pull the whole thing out in one piece. The only problem is when these have been bent at a 90 like that, it's hard to get all the little crooks and bends out of it and get it straight enough where it will pass back through these bores relatively easily. So your other option is to take a side cutter and just cut them right in half. Sometimes they go flying. There we go. That one just about jumped out on us, as did the other side. But with those removed, 
The lifters now just slide right out and you can see how they are indeed both identical. And with that, the final piece we have left to remove is this small seal that the decompressor shaft passes through. Uh, several different ways you can remove this. You can get an uh, inside uh, slide hammer puller, tap it out of there, you can pry it out. Um, a few years ago, I cut these little pieces of uh, scrap steel, they're one inch long, and I have them uh, uh, beveled at a 45 on each end. And what that allows me to do is stick these down in behind the seal, flatten it out, and basically they will form a bridge across the back side of the seal just like that. I uh, get them centered out behind the seal. They give you a nice little bridge back there so you can drive that out from the back side. That's how I prefer to do it. So set a large socket down here so you can drive the seal into that. Make sure we're centered up. Yep. I use this uh, brass drift because it will not mar the uh, edges of that bore. There we go, seals out, contents are in the socket, and now you can see this is an old leather-lipped uh, design. That stuff gets pretty dried out, and it's always good to uh, replace those. Uh, it should uh, stave off any potential seeps that will uh, make the dust stick to them, make everything look really dirty once this thing starts running. So, repeat the same process on the remaining three. So after quite a lot of disassembly and even more cleaning, I've been able to give everything a good look and honestly, I'm liking what I'm seeing right here. Um, I did uh, swap out for a nice uh, wooden two x four holder for all those uh, lifters. Once you start cleaning them, the, uh, the Sharpie marks come off, but inch and three eighths spade bit on two inch centers set to a fixed depth in the drill press makes a really nice holder for these and nice friction fit too. They don't just fall out. You can identify them with a Sharpie marker, all is well and good. Uh, as you may remember, water ingestion was a bit of a problem with 1113. Some of these suffered a little bit of water staining, but honestly, they all look really good where they contact the camshaft lobes and they all slide well in their bores. So none of that is going to be of any bother at all. Those are gonna run happily ever after. Um, I was able to get a good look at all the decompressor shafts with that little cam on the end that acts on the lifters. I'll show you guys how those work in a minute. A um, little bit of wear on the leading edge right there, but the 1113 originals really aren't bad at all. There's nothing to worry about there. I'll show you uh, <laughs> what a 5J2115 one looks like. That's out of my grandpa's old cat. You can see a lot of wear there. Where that was so worn, where it contacted a lifter, it was virtually ineffective. I'll just uh, set them side by side here and you can really see how much more wear there is on that one as opposed to that. So guy doesn't have to worry about this at all. Um, the real correct way to uh, to repair wear like this would be to replace one of these. I tried hitting this with a file and they are hard. It's amazing how, how badly war those are. Uh, you could build those up with a little bit of weld, reshape them, and it'll get you by for a while. But like I said, with the hardness factor, it's probably best off to uh, try and source some new or better ones, if at all possible. Now, the uh, seals that I took out of here for those shafts, the uh, cat number is a 1B8212. That crosses to a CR6814. I didn't even check cat for these because these were so readily available. Quick specs on those in case you're interested. Uh, 0.688 shaft diameter. They are made for a 1.375 inch bore. The seal OD is 1.379 to give you your interference fit and they are 0 0.250 wide or quarter inch. And uh, these are going to fix those shafts up really well. They're gonna be a lot better than those old leather lipped ones even though I do like the all metal construction of these. You can't buy them like that anymore so this is what we go with. Now for how this decompression mechanism works, you have the lifter, you have the decompressor shaft with that little cam on the end that I've been talking about, and they interface with each other a lot like that. That little cam rides in this, uh, this cutout area on the lifter. So in full compression mode, the, uh, the camshaft is popping these lifters up and down. Everything is uh, all happy. The valves are opening and closing. But if you wanted to uh, decompress the engine or turn the compression off, you would pull the compression release handle that would rotate this shaft and this little cam would interface with the bottom of this shoulder 
and raise that lifter up. Now it's going to lift it right off the cam lobe. So the lifter pushes on the push rod. The push rod actuates the rocker arm. The rocker arm opens the valve. And in decompression mode like this, with this little uh, cam holding the lifters open, you will have all four intake valves open on all four cylinders, and that engine's not going to build any compression. You can wheel it over. Everything is all well and good. And then when you uh, re-engage compression or take the compression release off, sorry, off, <coughs> That just rotates this lever back. That cam allows the lifter to drop, and your camshaft is once again actuating the lifter. Um, that's it's like I said, just crazy simple how that works. Um, and as far as like building up those old worn uh, cams on the end of these levers, like 2115 had, uh, you would not want to go any higher than what the factory original surface is. Uh, this is a non-adjustable unit. Um, you really can't make the valves open any wider, and it's probably not wise to do so anyway, because if you hang those intake valves open too far, you might hit a piston um, when it's coming up to top dead center. So that's how those work there. And for the reassembly now, we're just going to do the run through on one unit because all the rest of them will be the same. A little bit of prep work done off camera. I've got the new seal installed as well as a, a light coating of assembly lube on all the contact surfaces and on both lifters. So flip this over. I'll begin by installing the lifters in their original bores. So here is the exhaust valve lifter for number one. Here is the intake. And now we retain them with that lock wire, or that uh, wire lock, I believe they called it. This is just that 1 8 round rod, uh, cut a four inch long section. That seems to uh, do these pretty well. And we will pass that through those holes. And that's another function of those cutout areas in those lifters. That rod, or this little uh, lock wire, will hold those in while you're manipulating these and getting those set in the block. Those lifters won't fall out on you. So. To make that permanent, we'll just take a hammer and just bend each one of these ends over to a 90 degree angle. Okay, that will do. Have both of those uh, secured in there, they can't fall out. So flip it over. And next, I'll put the decompressor shaft in. Also, have some assembly lube on that as well as on the cam surface where it will interface with that lifter. Just gently uh, start it in the seal so as not to damage the lip. Next, the little retention plate goes on over the top of it. The two little uh, machine screws hold that. Okay, now the little key can go on the decompressor shaft. And last, the lever. Cinch the pinch bolt down, make sure everything moves smoothly, and it does. Now we will watch that intake lifter as we actuate the lever, and it raises the lifter. So the decompression mechanism is working. Again, repeat this process for the remaining three. All right, the off-camera work is done, and all of the assemblies are back together. Really happy with how all the lifters fit. Everything moves nice. Decompression mechanisms work as they should, so all these are ready for installation. I have all four of the gaskets punched out for those and the attaching bolts right here. You can see the eight on this side are threaded all the way like a regular bolt. The eight on this side have quite the pronounced shoulder. Each one of these housings gets two of these shouldered bolts. I'll show you down here on the block. You can see of each opening, we have this hole down here is thre threaded all the way to the surface. This hole up here is threaded to the surface, but these special shouldered bolts must go in the upper right corner and the lower left. The reason being, the threads do not come all the way out to the surface here, and those are bored to be a tight fit on these shouldered portions of these bolts, and they're also a tight fit in the through holes on the housings on this corner and this corner. So these are basically like alignment dowels and it's very important to get these put in their proper positions. So to install these just drop right in and I know somebody's gonna ask, I have assembly lube on the cam lobes and on the bottoms of the lifters as well as sealer on the gasket. So all of the proper preparations have been completed. So we will start with a shouldered bolt up here on the upper right. 
and throw another shouldered bolt down here on the lower left. Finish off with the standard bolts in the other two corners. And once I get these ran down and fully tight, we will just progress on down the line. Number two now. Next is three. And finally, number four. And now this bar can go on. It's what joins all four of those little compression release levers to one another. Each one is held on with a small pin. Each one of these pins has a, a little cotter pin that goes on the back side, gets folded through and retains everything in place. And then we have this other little smaller bar that goes up on the back side of number four back here. That's where the, uh, the rest of the linkage comes from the starting engine and that whole lever and everything bolts back there. That's where that will attach and actuate all four of these in unison. So I'm just working this here, making sure everything's still good since I got all of the cotter pins in each one of the uh, the pivot points there. And just thinking about this whole mechanism right here and how uh, when they redesigned this engine and turned it into the D311 with the uh, four inch bore, they basically eliminated all this mechanism on the side and their compression release was entirely contained under the valve cover in the cylinder head. They actually had a rod that went through that actually uh, uh, acted upon the intake rockers themselves and basically just had four flat covers. They still had the lifters behind housings here, but nothing stuck out of them like this. And it's just how they, uh, they really streamlined this whole procedure and got rid of all these potential leak points and all these uh, pivots and mechanisms and all this external stuff that can, you know, that can bind and, and get hit and damaged and what have you. But anyway, that part is done. So it's getting late but it's not late 30 yet so i think we'll round out the video by putting those lower crankcase inspection covers on i just happen to have them right here gaskets made bolts already let's put them on so really nothing special at all to talk about here um no sealer on the gasket because again i'm just going to be installing these for now hand tight just like i did these lower oil pan covers that is because once I put coolant into this engine I am going to be removing all of these side inspection covers again to have a very good look at all those liner seals to make sure no coolant is leaking down into the crankcase. Yeah, just pop this one on too. This is uh, just kind of keep all the shop dust and stuff that floats around from getting down into that crankcase. Just trying to keep things clean for as long as possible since I got everything uh, pretty well to the point where I'm happy with it inside here. So I'll just finish uh, starting the rest of these bolts and we'll wrap it up. And that does it for this installment. We got the crankcase sealed up on this side. Lifters are in over here. Decompression mechanism is in place and working. And cylinder head is gonna be next, everybody. As uh, was the case with 1113's original block, her cylinder head was also destroyed from the, uh, the freezing and the frost cracks and everything. So it's gonna require me fixing up a different cylinder head altogether to go on this engine. I do have a couple of uh, potential prospects. It's probably gonna be a lot of work to get either one of those things fixed up, but we'll get into it and I'm not gonna stop till I'm happy with it. So it's late, I'm gonna wrap the video right here. As always, everyone, thank you for watching. Hope to see you back again.